property. Uh, fucking what is property by Pierre Joseph Proudhon. <clears throat> what is property or an inquiry into the principle of right and of government? Chapter one. Method pursued in this work, the idea of a revolution. If I were asked to answer the following question, what is slavery? And I should answer in one word, it is murder. My meaning would be understood at once. No extended argument would be required to show that the power to take from a man his thought, his will, his personality, is a power of life and death, and that to enslave a man is to kill him. Why then, to this other question, what is property, may I not likewise answer? It is theft. Without the certainty of being misunderstood, the second proposition being no other than a transformation of the first. I undertake to discuss the vital principle of our government and our institutions, property. I am in my right. I may be mistaken in the conclusion which shall result from my investigations. I am in my right. I think best to place that last thought of my book first. Still, I am in my right. Such an author teaches that property is a civil right, born of occupation and sanctioned by law. Another maintains that it is a natural right, originating in labor. And both of these doctrines, totally opposed as they may seem, are encouraged and applauded. I contend that neither labor, nor occupation, nor law can create property, that it is an effect without a cause. Am I censurable? But murmurs begin to arise. Property is theft. That is the war cry of 93. That is the signal of revolutions. Reader, calm yourself. I am no agent of discord, no firebrand of sedition. I anticipate history by only a few days. I disclose a truth whose development we may try to in vain to arrest. I write the preamble of our future constitution. This proposition which seems blasphemous to you, property is theft, would, if our prejudice allowed us to consider it, be recognized as the lightning rod to shield us from the coming thunderbolts. But too many interests stand in the way. Alas, philosophy will not change the course of events. Destiny will fulfill itself regardless of prophecy. Besides, must not justice be done and out education be finished and our education be finished? We must ascertain whether the ideas of despotism, civil inequality, and property are in harmony with the primitive notion of justice and necessarily follow from it. Assuming various forms according to the condition, pos position, and relation of persons, or whether they are not rather the illegitimate result of a confusion of different things, a fatal association of ideas. And since justice deals especially with the questions of government, the condition of persons, and the possession of things, we must ascertain under what conditions, judging by universal opinion and the progress of the human mind, government is just, the condition of citizens is just, and the possession of things is just. Then, striking out everything which fails to meet those conditions, the result will at once tell us what legitimate government is, what the legitimate condition of citizens is, and what the legitimate possession of things is, and finally, as the last result of the analysis, what justice is. Is the authority of man over man just? Everybody answers, no. No, the authority of man is only the authority of law, which ought to be justice and truth. The private will counts for nothing in government. The private will counts for nothing in government, which consists first in discovering truth and justice in order to make the law, and second in superintending the execution of this law. I do not now inquire, inquire whether our constitutional form of government satisfies these conditions, whether, for example, the will of the ministry never influences the declaration and interpretation of the law, or whether our deputies in their debates are more intent on conquering by argument than by force of numbers. It is enough for me that my definition of a good government is allowed to be correct. This idea is exact, yet 
we see, and yet we see that nothing seems more just to the Oriental nations than the despotism of their sovereigns, that with the ancients and in the opinions of the philosophers themselves, slavery was just. That in the Middle Ages, the nobles, the priests, and the bishops felt justified in holding slaves. That Louis XIV thought that he was right when he said, the state, I am the state. And that, the Napoleon, and that Napoleon deemed it a crime for the state to oppose his will. The idea of justice then applied to sovereignty and government has not always been what it is today. It has gone on developing and shaping itself by degrees until it has arrived at its present state. But has it reached its last phase? I think not. Only as the last obstacle has to be overcome arises from the institution of property, which we have kept intact. In order to finish the reform in government and consum consummate the revolution, this very institution we must attack. Is political and civil inequality just? Some say yes, others no. To the first, I would reply that when the people abolished all privilege of birth and caste, they did it, in all probability because it was for their advantage. Why then do they favor the privileges of fortune more than those of rank and race? Because, say they, political inequality is a result of property, and without property, society is impossible. Thus, the question just raised becomes a question of property. To the second, I content myself with this remark. If you wish to enjoy political equality, abolish property. Otherwise, why do you complain? Is property just? Everybody answers without hesitation. Yes, property is just. I say everybody, for up to the present time, no one who thoroughly understood the meaning of his words has answered no. For it is no easy thing to reply understandably in, in understandingly to such a question only time and experience can furnish an answer. Now, this answer is given. It is for us to understand it. I undertake to prove it. We are to proceed with the demonstration in the following order. 1. We dispute not at all. We refute nobody. We deny nothing. We accept as sound all the arguments alleged in favor of property and confine ourselves to a search for its principle. In order that we may uh, then ascertain whether this principle is faithfully expressed by property. In fact, property being defensible on no ground save that of justice, the idea, or at least the intention of justice, must of necessity underlie all of the arguments that have been made in defense of property. And, as on the other hand, the right of property is only exercised over those things which can be appreciated by the senses, justice, secretly objectifying itself, so to speak, must take the shape of an algebraic formula. By this method of investigation, we soon see that every argument which has been invented on behalf of property, whatever it may be, always and of necessity leads to equality, that is, to the negation of property. The first part covers two chapters, one treating of occupation, the foundation of our right, the other of labor and talent, considered as causes of property and social inequality. The first of these chapters will prove that the right of occupation obstructs property. The second, that the right of labor destroys it. Two, property then being of necessity, conceived as existing only in connection with equality, it remains to find out why, in spite of this necessity of logic, equality does not exist. This new investigation also covers two chapters. In the first Considering the fact of property in itself, we inquire whether this uh, we we inquire whether this fact is real, whether it exists, whether it is possible, for it would imply a contradiction. Were these two opposite forms of society, equality and inequality, both possible? Then we discover, singularly enough, that property may indeed manifest itself accidentally but that as an institution and principle, it is mathematically impossible. So that the axiom of the school 
ab actua et, ab actua ad posse vale conceptual from the uh, from the actual to the possible the inference is good is given the lie as fat uh, as far as property is concerned Finally, in the last chapter, calling psychology to our aid and probing man's nature to the bottom, we shall disclose the principle of justice, its formula and character. We shall state that with precision the organic law of society. We shall explain the origin of property, the cause of its establishment, its long life, and its approaching death. We shall definitively establish its identity with theft and after having shown that uh, these three prejudices, the sovereignty of man, the inequality of condition, and property, are one and the same, that they may be taken for each other and are reciprocally com uh, convertible, we shall have no trouble in, in uh, interfering there, uh, therefrom, or inferring therefrom. By the principle of contradiction, the basis of government and right, there, our investigations will end, reserving the right to continue them in future works.